Hey guys, what up? This video is brought to you by Linode. Linode is a web hosting company and I've been using them for several years. So you can see that uh, I can log into my account right now. So essentially what Linode allows me to do, it allows me to run a server in a protected environment by a bunch of people who actually know how to maintain the hardware. And I just pay a monthly fee in order for that to happen. And I get full access to the operating system to install anything I want. If you guys are looking to start your own websites and try to get them out there, I recommend you check out Linode. There's a $20 discount in the link below. There's also a free promotion for their object storage, which is a new way to store like massive amounts of data within their cloud. And you guys can check that out for more information as well. Hey guys, what up? So in this video, I want to talk about why I like Strapi. This is a project that I just recently started messing around with. And I like the direction that it's going in because for the longest time, I really feel like most of the modern tools out there when it comes to frameworks, they like, they've really let me down. So what I've been looking for for a long time for blog-related websites or content-related websites is something similar to what Django provides. And Django is a Python web framework that's been around for almost 15 years now, I would guess. And with that, there's also a few problems. Now, a few things have been addressed. Like, um, number one, Django is built around a relational database. So um, MongoDB or Cassandra or all these other different NoSQL databases, they don't really jive very well with the traditional Django approach. Now, you can actually, like, hack it up and make Django work with those. So anyway, all that asynchronous programming, um, you know, parallel programming, it, it all kind of runs in the same category and it's not something that Django was well suited for. So all that said, with Node.js, Node.js is dominating the job market. There's like there there's tons of websites using it. We now use it for our build tools. We use it to create tools like Webpack to compile our, our React code. Nodes being used all over the place. The package managers, NPM and Yarn, are pretty much running the show these days in web development. So all that stuff said I've been looking for a Django type of admin system, something that allows me to maintain my data uh, very easily, or at least as easy as possible. And to date, I've never found a tool that was better than what Django has been able to provide for the last 10 years, which is a built-in administration system that allows me to maintain all of my database stuff without even being a database expert and really a database noob at that. Now, granted, the Django admin is just one feature. Here are screenshots of the admin that, that come with Django. It's one feature of, like I said, a full-featured web framework. So Django provides a whole lot more than this. But for the most part, a lot of my websites, I just simply need some sort of back-end server-side API with some sort of UI that I can interface to my database. And a lot of people that come from the PHP world, they use like PHP My Admin. And I think Postgres now has their own tool as well. In fact, I know they do. I just don't remember what it's called. But essentially, having to write all the code that is this backend administrator that does all the CRUD, you know, create, read, update, delete to your database and provides a visual representation of all of that stuff, it's not something that you couldn't code yourself, but it would take you a long time. It would take you probably weeks to months to do something uh, anywhere near as effective as something like Django. But... That all said, we're going to be talking about Strapi, which is the project that this video is entirely about. So Strapi, I think, is the closest thing that I've seen in a Node.js environment that provides the, the back-end services that you need, like really the concrete admin to maintain your data and relationships, and then also um, to just you know be able to visualize your data. Strapi itself is built with Node.js. Like I mentioned, that's, uh, it's used all over the place now. Some of the companies that are using it, IBM, NASA, Walmart. And, um, and really what I like about this is that it just focuses on that data aspect of your project. So all you need to do to get started with it is to have Node.js installed. And then you end up using Yarn. Well, really, you need to use uh, Node to use NPM to install Yarn. And then you use Yarn to create the Strapi app. Those are really the steps that are involved. And then once you have that, you then have a working local database. So let me give you an example. So this is a little Strapi application that I spun up. And all it does is it comes with a standard web page. So I would say kind of similar to what I was trying to do with a project that I have called Bare Bones React. But it gives you just this starting index.html page. And then that's that's really it. It, it. From there, everything else is a back-end web server 
that's running and it's uh, it delivering data for you. So to start a Strapi app, I already have it installed. It's called First Project. I would just simply say npm run start, or I could say yarn run start either way. They're going to invoke uh, the localhost um, built-in web server that comes with Strapi. And then you go to open your administrator. You're going to log in to whatever sort of super user you're, you create, which is very similar to the Django admin. And then from here, you can just go ahead and start building out your data. Like it, it, right now, I have this bands, and you can see there's two bands in here. There's Bayside and Census Fail. And to see the API in action, this is the localhost address. So this is the running backend API that you have with Strapi. And then you can just simply look for your data. So here you say bands, and you get a list of all the different bands you have. If you want to just query on one, you simply pass in the ID of whatever band it is that you're looking for. So you just get that one specific result back. So Strapi is one of the reasons why I think it's it's a good approach is because it doesn't try to throw a front end at you. This is really just a back end API. So you have something to deliver data to, to request data from. And then what you need to do, and this isn't you know what Strapi is providing for you, you need to come up with a front end system and you could use something like React. React is obviously a popular front-end system that's used by all kinds of companies. You could use Angular or Vue. Or you could just simply use vanilla JS. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to make a request out to that API. In fact, you could even use something like Axios to make um, like a call. What the hell is this? Some sort of... Yeah, that's not what I was trying. I was trying to find this thing. But anyway, you could just use that uh, to also make a server from, you know, make a, uh, an Ajax call or a very similar type of call using promise based system with Node from one server to the next server to request this data as well. So, the, the, however, you want to retrieve this data from your API is completely up to you. And um, this is just a simple example of, of something where it's like, I don't even have to have any sort of client-side library. I can just use like raw vanilla JavaScript. I have a div ID here, and I'm saying use the fetch API to call out to the local, you know, local running API. From there, whatever sort of results I'm getting, so in this case there's, there's two results there. I'm just iterating over the results, and I'm building a HTML element. And it has, really I'm building dynamic H1s and H3s. And then I'm, I'm appending it all to this one thing called element, which then gets bound to this div element right here. So to see that running, I could just open up and uh, view this in my file explorer. It's weird. I work on a Mac for the last year and a half, and, and I still do Windows development at home. I also do Linux on my server, but like I end up getting them mixed up sometimes. But anyway, so... Um, I just want to show you this. Now, this is the, the two results that we had inside of our database. I don't know why I have wrap here because they're not a wrap group. But anyway, this is a simple index.html page. There's no, no framework, no client. Like There's no React or Angular or even jQuery or Bootstrap or any of that stuff. Just HTML using the fetch API to make an Ajax call out to the local running Strapi API, grabbing the data, using raw JavaScript to just bind it, uh, to the DOM. So yeah, you're probably asking like, uh, all that said, that's all well and good. Like, uh, you know, so why Strapi? Well, it's like, well, why not? Like, you you could do that yourself, like create your own API and back end if you want, but it's kind of already there. It seems like a good tool. I like the admin to manipulate the data on the back end. To give you an idea of how easy that is, like if I have bands and users here, then I just select a content type builder. And here what we can do is we can add a new user. I'm kind of zoomed in on this. Let me do the normal the uh, the normal thing here. So anyway, you got the, um, th this is the band. By default, it does have users and all this stuff so that you can assign viewing permissions for each individual piece of data you have. So I had to restart the server in the development mode because there's actually a production mode and a development mode. And in development mode, I can now add a new collection type. So say we were messing with something like dogs. We're creating a, a dog API. So I'm going to say dog 
is the name of it. And then you just pick different fields. So we could say like breed is a field uh, and that's like a text field. Then we have like a, a description, which is a rich te text field that can have images and video and stuff. And for right now, we'll just say that that's all good. So we have this, uh, this new type here. We can just save it. And then once you have the type, you're going to see it up on the top left corner with your collection type. So we go to our dogs, start adding some new data here. Uh, we'll add the kind of dog that I have. And then boom, you, you have your first piece of data there. So then if you want to view it again, you just go and you look at the uh, dogs. And you see you get to 403. So by default, like it's restricted that new API endpoint that you just created. It's not going to allow the world to see it. So then in order to, to allow the world to see it, you go to roles and permissions. Click on uh, the public. And then we go down and we find the dog and we say that we allow to find one, which means you can find one single result and or find, I'm sorry, find returns a list and then find one returns one single result. And we save that and we can now access it. So we go back to our endpoint and we can get access to that data we just created. You can also get a little bit more, um, a little bit more in depth with the relationship, right? So like every dog, like I could say something like, uh, let's add another field. And this is a relation field. So this is where the relational database comes in. And you can see like a uh, dog has one band, right? So we have, uh, you could have a dog related to a band, like, you know, dog's favorite band or something like that. And um, so you can see like dog has and belongs to one band or dog has one band. That's probably like if a dog has one single favorite band, that'd be, that's what you would want to select. If it could have multiple favorite bands, you would select that. And then if you want to make sure that uh, multiple bands can be assigned to multiple dogs and vice versa, then that's what you would want to select. Um, so anyway, you just design your relational type content. And then another thing too is that by default, Strapi has a built-in database, uh, which is another reason why I like it. So the built-in database is using uh, SQLite. So SQLite is not something that a lot of people use in production, although you can. A lot of people are using Postgres, MySQL, and or MongoDB. And that's one of the great things about this as well is that unlike the Django admin, this uh, backend admin works with MongoDB just the same as it does with, with like Postgres or MySQL. All right, guys. So if you're just starting on this uh, programming journey and you guys want to learn with me, I have tutorials on pretty much everything under the sun. There's a bunch of them, and there's also just uh, flexible pricing as well, so you don't have to pay individually, or you can if you want. But I appreciate all the support, uh, all the customers who have actually bought something to date. That's awesome. I appreciate it. And I'm going to be uh, releasing more stuff there all the time. All right, so make sure you guys check that out. That's CodeHawk.com with no S. So like my name, but without an S. It's a play on words. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.